What's up, YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with another video. So, I was arguing on the internet today. That's a great way to start a video, right? I always argue on the internet. Um, I never seem to learn, you know? And I, and I think my fault is ego investment. Like, I actually think I can prove I'm right to people or prove that my way of thinking is a good way to think. And I realized there's just no point. You could be nice, you could have tact, you could be blatantly mean and disrespectful, and uh, it's just not good. In the opposition's defense, um, I understood my points that I was arguing, but um, the way I articulated them was poorly. Sometimes I have an off day. It's not the point. Point is, classic debate, um, you know, about intersex relations. I always debate about that stuff. Very fun. Um... Yeah, basically, I was like, yo, when a, when a dude um, wants to sleep with you, that's very different from when a dude wants to commit to you. I was talking about that um, on some, some person's post. They basically wrote something like, stay toxic, kings. Kind of like mocking men, like putting each other up for you know having standards and stuff. So apparently, um, when you joke about that, you're being toxic, whatever. So I just said, y'all, ladies, you know, pay attention. You know, between sleeping together and committing, a lot of ladies, they mix them up and treat it like it's the same thing. Like a guy wanting to sleep with you and a guy wanting to be with you is the same thing. It's not. Men know this. And uh, yeah, this chick just went like, yo, mansplaining, stop mansplaining, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm an idiot, glutton for punishment, yet I actually think like, oh yeah, if I explain my intent poorly or otherwise, they'll actually like try to listen and be like, oh, I never looked at it that way before. They never do. I got to keep reminding myself that, that ego investment's a waste of time and there's a less than 1% chance that someone will actually change their mind to your opinion on the internet. But I'm an idiot. Anyway, last video we were talking about uh, chameleons and we were talking about the um, positive shame, not positive shaming tactic, uh, the positive manipulation tactic um, and how women use that to kind of get what they want. Today, what I want to talk about is female shaming tactics. Um, more specifically, I guess, feminist shaming tactics. I mean, in 2021 onwards, it seems like those are synonymous terms these days. So I found on Urban Dictionary, because that's a reliable source. But no, I actually found this and it was, it was really good. Like I read it and I'm like, yes, I have encountered all of these on the internet. So what you have to understand, we're going to talk about shaming tactics, the second form of uh, female manipulation today. The purpose of shaming tactics is to get you to shut up about your unpopular opinion and get you to fall in line with whatever blue pill BS uh, they're selling, which honestly, blue pill is just a system-wide shit test to filter out the men that can be manipulated. That's what it is. So, yes. Um, what I want to do is I just kind of want to read this to you. And then we'll go through the different types of ways that they use shaming tactics. And as I go through these, you're definitely going to be like, you know, yeah. I've, I've had a woman talk to me like this before. Usually when you have large groups of people all saying the same damn thing. Uh, in terms of like, you know, insults and stuff like that. Usually there's some dogma behind that. So um, let's just start. So Urban Dictionary Feminist Shaming Tactics. You can read this yourself if you want. But it basically says, Shaming tactics are used against men whenever a discussion arises about feminism, men's issues, divorce, romance, marriage, domestic violence, child support, visitation rights, false accusations, workplace benefits, false imprisonment, over-criminalization, and more. Basically all these things that... Um, society acts like it disproportionately affects women when in reality the opposite is true. This stuff disproportionately affects us. Divorce disproportionately affects us. Failure at romance disproportionately affects us. Um, domestic violence, uh, it's been proven that there's just as many male domestic violence victims as female, but nobody talks about that. Child support, how we get destroyed on that. Uh, parental alienation and visitation rights, how we get destroyed on that. False accusations, are you kidding me? 60 plus percent of dudes are like, nah, I'm not 
freaking working with a chick alone in a room. No way. And they're like, well, why not? Why not? Because you could just make something up. I lose my job. Like, this is where we're at. And then, you know, false imprisonment based on false accusations and charges. That's always fun. Um, and the fact that we serve, I think I think it's like they, they serve 60% as much time as we do for the same crime. Insane. Just insane. Disproportionately affects men. And I think the only and the only thing is like, um, when you bring this stuff up, what they'll do is they'll kind of whip out a shaming tactic to try to um, get you to stop talking about this stuff because they know it's an uncomfortable truth that kind of screws up their whole argument. Which again, I believe that the feminist movement is really just the system wide shit test. Like, hey, we don't have confidence in men anymore, so we're gonna put this shit test on you to see how many of you fold. And the ones that fold are the guys that aren't getting any poom poom. And that's why you see 80% really going for the top 20% now. Because that top 20% is like, screw you, I got money. I don't got a white knight for your ass. I don't need to simp. I don't need to do any of that. And that's what's happening. And that's aside from looks, money, status, game, and all that fun stuff. So, without further ado, let's talk shaming tactics. The first one is what we call the uh, charge of irascibility, um, which is basically just saying like, hey, you've got anger issues. Um, you know, a woman will say something like, you're bitter. You need to get over your anger at women or you're so negative about women, right? Like they didn't freaking do all this crap to you that broke your heart and made you feel like crap. Granted, I know. Your personal experience doesn't mean you get to take it out and have a vendetta against all women. I understand that, but it does give you the right to be cautious, and it does give you the right to, you know, educate your fellow men about red flags like, yo, watch the hell out for this. And obviously, they don't want men knowing about red flags because that undermines their whole bullshit, right? You know, if we know your psychological manipulation, your psychological manipulation isn't going to work. And Coach Greg Adams actually said this. He's like, listen, being aware of this stuff, spreading this red pill message you're going to lose like 90% of the women as opportunities by doing this. But Coach Greg Adams, he was just like, you know what? Great. I don't care. You just allowed me to filter out all the riffraff and work my way to the diamonds, so to speak. Um, I actually have a t-shirt that says that. No pressure, no diamonds. If you don't make things a little uncomfortable, you're not going to get to where you want to be. But... Um, yeah, usually a good counter to someone trying to say something like this, like, you're bitter, you need to get over your anger at women, or you're so negative, a good reply is usually like, well, maybe if you stop nagging me, I'll lighten up a little bit. That's usually a good one. Like, if you're just trying to post something to mind your own business and some girl gets on your case, I don't know why she thinks she's going to change your mind, but yeah, stop nagging me. That's a good one. Next one is charge of cowardice. Um, you know, the, they basically accuse you of being afraid of women. You need to get over your fear, step up and ch take a chance like a man. You're afraid of strong woman. At that point, you know, that's a common one too. They try to make you scared. Like, oh, you're a little bitch. They're trying to emasculate you in the conversation so that you fall in line. Like, oh, no, I can't look emasculated in front of people. We can't have that. So um, if they try to say that you're a coward, I mean, at that point, you could just kind of counter that. Like, look, I ain't afraid of strong anything. In fact, in order to be attracted to you, I really don't give a shit about how many college degrees you have. We said this last time. I don't care how much money you make. I'm not intimidated by that. I can go do that myself. I don't need you for that. Shut that one down pretty quick. Um, charge of hypersensitivity. So this is a classic one. Again, trying to target the masculinity because women understand how much masculinity gives strength to men. So they kind of want to disarm you to level the playing field. They'll say, stop whining, get over it, suck it up like a man. You don't have it nearly as bad as women. You're just afraid of losing your male privileges, your male, your fragile male ego. These are the kind of things. And everything that I'm reading here, these are things that have been said to me on the internet when you talk about this stuff. Again, I'm a glutton for punishment. I'd like to think that maybe my words get through to people. I have actually talked to some women that are kind of like, nah, man, it's uncomfortable, but you're not wrong. I've had that. But most people respond like this. And I'm and I'm just kind of like, what privileges? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you could just drop the stats on divorce. You could drop the stats on domestic violence and false accusations. 
boom, you shut down hypersensitivity, right? Um, and as I'm going through all these shaming tactics, to be honest with you, you usually, a woman will stop trying to manipulate you if you just get to the direct like root and say like, look, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to manipulate and shame and it's not going to work. Usually that's a, probably the easiest way to shut these down universally. But if you want to just add your own little flavor to it, you can kind of address each of these directly. Um, here's, oh, I love this one. They accuse you of being immature and irresponsible. Again, women know the buttons to push, right? A grown ass man is big on being mature. He's big on being responsible, taking on responsibility, you know, controlling his own destiny, being on his purpose. We talk about this all the time. So, of course, what will women say? Grow up, incel. You're so immature. Do you live with your mom? I'm not interested in boys. I'm interested in men. Again, what is this, right? This is a woman trying to see if you have little dick energy. She's trying to get a rise out of you when she says stuff like this. This is argument ad hominem. It's meant to attack your character. Notice that all of these shaming tactics are not meant to address your red pill message directly itself to try to disprove it because they know they can't. The truth is uncomfortable. It'll set you free, but it'll piss you off first. This is especially true for women. Um, but yeah, again, they'll, they'll basically say like, oh, you know, if you don't fall in line, be the beta cuck provider and all that stuff, then we're just going to say you're immature and irresponsible. You're not a real man. And for a long time in the blue pill matrix, this worked. But now men are figuring out women's hustle now, and they're just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not giving you a kid to satisfy your baby rabies and then just get left on red with child support. I'm not doing that, right? Like, like I'm a kind of guy that I'm real with myself, right? Like I know how women perceive me. Like it or not, the sexual marketplace, how that views me is not the same as how I view me. Like me, I think pretty highly of myself. I think I've accomplished a lot in life. But honestly, I think the sexual marketplace looks at me as a beta. I just do. Weak jawline, big nose, big forehead, receding hairline. My height and my eyes, those are my two saving graces on physical features, right? Being tall is good and having decent eyes is good, right? But beyond that, um, I just, I don't think um, the sexual marketplace looks at me that way. Not that I care, but because I look a certain way, um, this ad hominem shaming tactic stuff I'm talking about, someone like me is more vulnerable to that versus some big alpha buff motherfucker. Even if that guy doesn't really have confidence, doesn't matter. He looks the part and women are less likely to screw with him. So there is that. But with the big alpha guys, they might use um, endangerment as a shaming tactic. Like, yo, you're scary. You're making me feel afraid. You're making me feel uncomfortable. That's to try to get you to fall in line because, you know, they're aware of your protect instinct, right? So they're like, hey, if I make him think that he's scaring me, maybe that'll get him to fall in line, right? Um, then there's also, you know... Um, oh, you can't get laid. That's a good one. They use that on betas all the time. Like, oh, yeah, look at you being all bitter about girls. You know, you can't get laid. But the way I look at that one is, well, most people do show up to red pill because of either sexual frustration or heartbreak. For me personally, I think it was heartbreak that brought me to red pill. It wasn't sexual frustration. Um, if I'm being completely honest, libido for me was never really high. Not all guys have high libido. Um... And that's probably a function of a lot of other things I got going on. But that's a tale for another time. But all I'm saying is that when you see shit like this, like incel, you don't get laid, all that, you've won the argument. You've won. She's going to ad hominem. She's not interested in actually addressing the topic. She's interested in straw mans and ad hominems. Because, you know, she could just look at your face with a weak jawline and no chin and attack that instead of intellectually engaging you because she knows she can't win. But let's keep going. There's also fanaticism. This is probably a very popular one. Um, just saying like, you know, you're an extremist. You know, you're misogynist. You're anti-feminist. Um, yeah, I'm anti-feminist. But I'm not crazy. Like, I don't hate women. I just think feminism is really bad for men and for women as a concept. 
Egalitarianism, different story. Feminism, no. I think feminism, honestly, they're just looking to take the patriarchy and flip it to a matriarchy. And I think if we had a matriarchy, I'm going to be real with you, not only would men be miserable, but I think women would be miserable as well. Look, we run shit. That's what we do. We run shit. We like running shit. We feel fulfilled running shit. And we don't mind sharing that with women who respect us. Very easy, right? Um, and then I guess uh, probably the last ones. Um, yeah. So obviously they could always target you and say and start questioning your sexual orientation because if you're not secure with yourself um, and they kind of sense that, boom, they'll do that to you. Uh, this is actually very common. I've, I've heard stories where guys will basically, um, they will say no to a woman's sexual advances. That's the first place they go. What, what are you, queer or something? Like, are you gay? What's up with that? At that point, you just gotta, if you're secure with yourself, you kind of be, gotta be like, well, so what if I am? Like, who cares? That's not what we're talking about here. You gotta have the level of confidence to be able to just be dismissive like that. And because usually dismissiveness um, kind of shows that you think what she's saying is a complete joke and that you don't acknowledge it. It's just a good idea um, to do that. Um, there's also instability, right? Like, you're, you're a wacko, you're crazy, or overgeneralization. You're such a sexist, like not all women are like that. Enough are that it's a problem. Tale for another time. Um, and then, of course, you know, we talk about, um, like I already mentioned, looks. Like, oh, you're not attractive. Like, you're a four. Like, who do you think you are as a four um, talking about women like this? Here's the thing. You don't have to be attractive to have standards. You could be the ugliest dude on the planet and still have standards on how you want to be treated and what you want in a relationship and stuff like that. But yeah, the point is these are all forms of manipulation through guilt and shame. So just to recap, um, you have anger management issues, you're a pussy, you're way too sensitive, you're immature and don't take responsibility, you're fanatical, like what are you, part of some misan misandry, not misandry, um, you know, MRA, psycho, male nationalist movement. Um, you know, you're scaring me. You're making me feel threatened. Um, you know, you probably don't get laid. You're an incel. Um, you know, what are you, gay? Um, stop overgeneralizing. You're a misogynist. I think you're crazy. You need to go to therapy. And yeah, maybe you're just ugly. These are the kind of things that women use to try to make you feel smaller and really, these shaming tactics are shit tests. Usually, when you call her out on her shaming tactics and pretty much like throw it back in her face and explain to her why what she's doing is a shaming tactic, two, why it has nothing to do with the argument itself, and three, why it's ultimately not going to work, usually the woman's just like, oh shit, I better turn off my notifications and just stop arguing. But honestly, sometimes I screw up sometimes when I, when I make an argument. I don't stay on point. Like I said, sometimes my ego investment gets the better of me. We're all men. We're all guilty of this. But as men, you just need to be aware of these manipulation tactics so that um, you don't fall for them and have like a, oh, I'm a dumbass moment. Granted, it's a dumb, dumbass moment with a stranger on the internet, so it doesn't really matter, I mean, in the grand scheme of things. But the point is that um, when you see these kind of things, like incel, you don't get laid, you got anger problems, yikes, bruh, you need therapy, man, uh, what are you, a misogynist? These are all buzzwords to try to just make you look bad so that everyone watching this theatrical performance on social media looks at you like you're the bad person, even though they never even addressed your straight-on factual point. Again, remember, they don't just go through it brute force and facts like we do. They use psychological and emotional manipulation. They tug at the heartstrings. Okay? This is what they do. So when you're aware of that and you see a girl like just totally saying some sort of BS about you and she's not even addressing the point you're trying to make, um, that's a person you just kind of got to go, <laughs> okay, you know that gif of that guy that's just like, okay, that's how you got to react to someone like that.
Okay. Like, I don't care. But, you know, if, a, if you're speaking with a woman and she's actually, like, trying to address your point and make points, that's someone worth talking to. You know? But I, I guess that's pretty much it. I just wanted to talk about shaming and guilt and how women use it to manipulate men to fall in line and continue consuming the blue pill. Uh, maybe even compromise the purple pill. But I just feel like there is no compromise. It's red pill or you, you check out, MGTOW. Like, that's it. There is no in-between. Maybe that's a bit harsh. I don't know. But I feel like even my own mother, who's a woman, she's purple pill at best. She gets some of the red pill truth, I'm saying, but she's still kind of hopeful because, you know, she has a perspective as a woman who gets told yes. Like, way more than I as a man will in my entire life uh, because she's a woman. That's how it goes. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I think about shaming tactics and all that fun stuff. So let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I know I kind of just cobbled this one together, but my brain was just so filled with all this stuff that I just had to come on and just go, Bleh! which is, probably isn't the best format <laughs> for a YouTube video, but it's an honest format. So I guess that's better than nothing. So, yeah, uh, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I guess I'll see you for the next one. Later.